Good morning, everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk through the process of de-googling an Android phone. Specifically, I'm going to be de-googling this Pixel 3a, and the way I'm going to be doing it is by installing a custom ROM called Calyx OS. Before I get into that, I want to talk a bit about what Calyx OS is. So it's a privacy-focused Android ROM maintained by a U.S. nonprofit called the Calyx Institute, which kind of looks like it's one guy, but that's how these things go. It has a mostly reasonable set of defaults for semi-technical users. For example, it doesn't include Google Apps, but it does include a library called MicroG, which lets apps that require the Google APIs to run, and it includes something called the Aurora Store, which allows apps from the Google Play Store to be installed, even though you don't install the Google Play Store on a de-Googled device. Compared to a stock Android install with Google Apps, Calyx results in much less of your data getting sent to Google, and it means that you're no longer getting automatic updates from Google at the same time as you're logging into Google services with your Google account, so they no longer have this sort of universal backdoor ability to push custom malicious updates to you, which realistically doesn't happen that frequently, but it shouldn't even be a possibility for our devices. Now, compared to a custom install with something like Lineage OS, Calyx provides an easier install with better defaults, but that's at the cost of some flexibility. For example, Calyx doesn't allow you to easily root your device. It's still possible if you put enough effort into it, but it's nowhere near as straightforward because they think that that's a security vulnerability, which means they're confused, but that's fine. Uh, the main reason to root in this sort of situation is to be able to get automatic updates in uh, the Aurora store and the f store, and Calyx OS enables both of those things by default, so we don't have that problem at least. Uh, for more of my thoughts on different custom Android ROMs, I released a video uh, around the same time as this one on that topic, so you can go watch that video. The first step in installing any custom ROM on an Android device is to get an Android device with an unlocked bootloader that is compatible with the custom ROM you want to install. Unfortunately, at least in 2021 in the United States, Almost all phones have locked bootloaders that prevent any custom operating system from being installed on them at all. The phone that I'm using in this particular case is this Pixel 3a, and the Pixel 3a does support most of the available custom ROMs, including Calyx OS, which is what I'm going to be installing. And I got this phone on eBay for about a hundred bucks. They're readily available at that price. Now there's a complication. Just getting a Pixel 3a is not good enough. You have to get the right Pixel 3a. Unfortunately, uh, Verizon likes to bootloader lock any phone they ship. So if you want to install a custom ROM, something that came from Verizon is completely useless. It's uh, effectively a brick from the factory. So in order to get that to work for the Pixel 3a, I looked up and figured out that the model number g 2 G is the correct bootloader unlocked thing, as opposed to G020E, which is the Verizon version that would never work. So this is probably the trickiest step in the process, is getting a working phone to make sure that you do that. Uh, the reason that I picked this particular phone, there are a couple options, is in addition to being relatively inexpensive, it has a headphone jack, which is a super important feature that for some reason, a lot of more recent phones have decided to leave out. In order to actually do the install, we need to go over to the Calyx OS website, and then we need to click this Get Calyx OS button. Then we have to say that we're gonna install on our phone. Uh, the Calyx Institute does sell phones pre-installed with Calyx OS through sort of a weird process. Uh, if you wanna give them money instead of doing this yourself, that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do but today I'm doing it myself. So I'm gonna click install. And then I have to pick my device. Here is the full list of devices that they support. Um, these devices here are the ones that still have uh, security updates for the operating system core itself from Google. So the Pixel 3a is basically the lowest end phone that is still in security updates that's supported by Calyx. So I'll go ahead and click Pixel 3a because that's what I'm doing. I run Linux, so I'm gonna click install from Linux. If you want to do this from Windows or a Mac, you'll have to click on those and then follow those directions. So I'm going to install from Linux. Now, there's a lot of steps here, but they aren't that complicated as far as steps go. They, uh, Calyx 
OS developers actually make this pretty straightforward. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set up our Android device to be able to install a custom ROM, and there's three steps for that. First, we have to turn on developer mode. Then we're going to have to, in the developer settings, enable USB debugging. Then we're going to have to, in the developer settings, enable, U enable OEM unlocking. That lets us unlock the bootloader to install a custom ROM. So I'm booting up this device for the first time. You can't see anything here. Oh, there's the Google logo. This is just a stock Pixel 3a, and we're going to wait for it to boot up. Now that it's booted, I'm going to have to go ahead and unlock it. And I didn't even get a setup screen. This is a used device. I don't know what situation it's in, but the first step that we're going to have to do is go into developer options. And to show this process, I installed an app called ScreenStream on the phone. So you can see here, here's the actual screen. And then over here, we have the same screen content displayed in my web browser. Um, this isn't going to be the best performance ever, but for the purpose of showing developer unlock, I can't do any of the fancier solutions. So you'll have to bear with me. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to enable developer options. So to do that, I'm going to have to go over to options. Then I scroll down to about phone. Then in about phone, we're going to go ahead and go down to the build number. That's right here. And then we're going to tap that seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Strangely, apparently developer settings were already set up on this phone. I don't remember unlocking it, but that would be the first step if that weren't enabled. All right, next we want to enable USB debugging. So this says settings, system, advanced. So system, advanced. Then we go into developer options. And then we're looking for USB debugging, which we want to turn on. And yes, I want to now allow USB debugging. All right, now that I've enabled USB debugging, next up we need to enable OEM unlocking. And after scrolling through this for a while, I discovered that I have to scroll up for OEM unlocking. So I'll hit that. And it says, are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I want to enable OEM unlocking. So those are the prep setup on the phone in order to be able to flash a custom ROM. The next step here is to set up my host computer with the software that I need. On Linux, this is really straightforward because we can install most of it through the package manager. So here's the commands I need. Uh, I am on Debian, I'm on Debian. So we'll do sudo apt update. And then we'll do sudo apt install Android SDK platform tools common, which it turns out I already have installed because I sometimes do Android stuff. Next thing that I need to do is download this thing called Device Flasher. So this is a uh, script that actually does the thing. So I'm going to copy that link. And then I'm going to go ahead and download that right here. I could also click on this and then it would show up in my downloads directory. But now I have it right here. Next thing it wants me to do is verify the digest. And we have uh, F4E6. And it says that the result should be F4E6. I could check this letter by letter, but the chances of someone spoofing just the first couple letters is pretty unlikely. So this is probably the right file. Next up, I need to download the factory image. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it looks like this is gonna take a second. So I'll let this download. Now that we have that 1.3 gigs downloaded, the next step is to plug in the phone and run the script. So first we've got to plug in the phone. Here's a USB cable connected to my computer. We're going to plug it into the phone and then we'll put the phone down here. And it says all we need to do is make the script executable. Uh, device flasher and then run it. And running. Uh, I have to in type in my sudo password so that it can install some stuff. This is kind of sketchy, but I'll trust it. Now it verifies that we did all the steps. We're connected to a Wi-Fi network on the phone. 
we enabled developer options, USB debugging, and OEM unlocking. Now I'm going to press enter. And it says, no devices to be flashed, exiting. So let's make sure that we're plugged in correctly. So we ran the script and it didn't work. Wonderful. So now it's time to start debugging. The first thing I want to do is verify that my device is plugged in. So I can do that with LS USB. And here is the device in the USB list. So this pixel that I want to flash is plugged in. The next thing that I can do is I happen to know what the process is. So it's going to use a tool called Fastboot to try to reboot the device probably. But let's go ahead and say Fastboot devices and see if we have anything. There's nothing in the Fastboot device list. The other thing it might be trying to use is ADB, the Android debug tool. So if I say ADB devices, we get our list of devices and it says that our device is unauthorized. So let's go ahead and check the phone and see if it wants me to uh, authorize it. So looking at the phone, I can't, uh, I don't have the screencast thing running anymore. Should probably screencast this. All right, so to list the list of devices, we're gonna go ahead and say ADB devices. It's going to say that we are unauthorized. So if I come back to my phone, um, I can say tap to turn off USB debugging. That's not actually what I wanna do. Uh, USB debugging is in here. I'll toggle it anyway. Allow USB debugging. Then we'll say ADB devices. Oh, okay, the allow USB debugging thing popped up. So I'll say always allow from this computer and then say allow. And with that, we can go ahead and try running the script again. Uh, yes, enter. Devices to be flashed, it found the device, that's good. And I press enter and the phone just rebooted. You can't see it in the uh, stream here because the thing died, but that's fine. So next thing it says, please use the volume and power keys on the device to unlock the bootloader. So you can't actually see what's going on here, but I have exactly the screen. Um, no, I don't. Uh, it says, do not unlock the bootloader. So if I use the volume keys, I can select unlock the bootloader, and then I can use the power button to actually do that. Now it rebooted again. We're just waiting. Now it is in fast boot mode. It's sending over the radio um, firmware image. It's sending over some custom keys, apparently. I think that's so that it can set up verified boot so that it can check that it is running an official Calyx OS image. I think there's a script to fix this later. I may have to back this out manually if, uh, if this gets stuck. Hopefully it won't. And now we're booting. Oh, we got a fast boot D, some sort of recovery thing, I think. No, this is in fact the fast boot screen. I haven't seen the fast boot screen look quite like that. Now it's actually copying over, I think, the custom ROM image. I may fast forward through some of this. Oh, there is the system image. Apparently there's another step where we have to unlock the bootloader. So I'm going to do that again. Same process. Up. No, oh, that's lock. Uh, do not lock. Oh, it wants me to lock the bootloader. Now it's asking me to lock the bootloader. So I can say lock the bootloader and press the button. And I think now the bootloader is locked to the Calyx OS keys. It says flashing complete. And it is uh, booting up with a yellow warning icon, which is kind of interesting. Google boot screen. Oh, that's a new boot animation. And now we have the Calyx OS setup screen, which uh, I don't have any easy way to screen share, but it's just a standard Android setup wizard, I assume. Uh, next, next, time zone, next, Wi-Fi, next, skip eSIM, because we'll put a real SIM in this one, allow location services, uh, skip screen lock, skip pin, enable micro G, Gives a list of additional apps that you can actually choose. Picking some next. 
Looks like it may be downloading those apps, I'm not sure. Next, start, and we have this thing installed. Let me go ahead and get that screen sharing app real quick. There we go, here's the Calyx OS main screen, and we've got some stuff installed. So here's the list of apps I ended up with, and from here it's just setting up a phone normally. If we want to install stuff from F-Droid, F-Droid is available here, and if we want to install stuff that would normally be available through the Google Play Store, we have the Aurora store here, which I'm not going to actually demonstrate. So that's the process that we're going to go through today. Thanks for watching this video. Go ahead and check in the description for a link to the associated blog post. Subscribe to my RSS. And you should definitely be running a de-googled phone. It's a good idea. Have a wonderful rest of your day.